Hi, and welcome to my channel. Or if you're a returning subscriber, hello again. It's so nice to see you back here for another video. My name is Tess Lark, and this is an art and beauty channel. So if those are videos you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed because I'm here for you every single week. And this week, I'm gonna be showing you how to use epoxy resin to make this really beautiful geode style crescent moon wall hanger. <laughs> So I posted a tutorial for this technique a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was last week. I'm not sure when this video is gonna go up, but I posted it recently. And the response to that video was really, really positive. And I'm glad that you guys like them because I really like them too. I think that these geode crescent moons are turning out really pretty. So I cannot wait to hop into today's project. Before we get started, I wanna go ahead and remind you that if you do like this video, please go ahead and make sure to give it a like. It not only helps out my channel a whole lot, but it also lets me know that I'm making content that you wanna see for me. So yes, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post and also I will have all the materials that I use for this project linked down below in my description so if anybody wants to try this project for themselves all of that information will be down there for you I will also go ahead and link my Etsy below so if you really like this project but maybe you don't want to make it yourself but would like to support me my channel my art my Etsy will be linked down below as well this is a longer video because this is a pretty time-intensive project so without further ado let's just hop right in and we'll start crafting so as you'll see here, I do have a purple moon that I was working on. I've got a tutorial for that one listed. But to be starting this project, I'm gonna be mixing up some resin for the base of my moon. And I'm using some Arteza mica powder. And I'm using a combination of a green mica powder and this sage glow color from Arteza. And that's just gonna give it a really nice pearly iridescence to the finished product. And this crescent moon mold takes 100 milliliters of resin. So I went ahead and pre-mixed my resin, but I'm just gonna go ahead and carefully mix my colors in on camera so you can see the process. I'm just working slowly and I'm gonna make sure that I'm um, scraping the sides and the bottom of my container, breaking up all of those little chunks of mica powder and making sure that the color is really even and consistent. And then after my color is completely mixed in, I like to let the resin sit for five or so minutes and that just allows some of the air bubbles to come up to the surface. And then I can go ahead and easily pop them with my heat gun before pouring them into the mold. Now I've just set my resin off to the side and I'm setting up my mold, making sure that it is nicely on top of some nice absorbent paper just so I can protect my desk. And I think that I'm not moving the purple one out of frame right now because it was still wet so I just wanted to let it sit. But I'm carefully filling in my base of my mold and I'm pouring from a distance and just a small stream because again this helps pop some air bubbles on the way down and I'm really kind of concentrating on the outer edges and the corners just to make sure that I get a nice even coating of resin. And then after I've filled up my mold, I will go ahead and hit it with my heat gun. And then after that, cover this project overnight or for the day and give it some time to cure completely before moving on to the next step. Once the resin is fully hard and set up, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it out of its mold and we will be moving on to our next step. So I went ahead and I mixed up another small batch of resin and I'm going to be mixing my colors. I find that for these projects, I like to usually do a darker color, a lighter color, and then white. So for this, I'll be doing white and then a darker green and a lighter green, as well as leaving some of this resin so I can use it for my crushed glass as well. And here I'm just using a little dropper to add just a little bit of alcohol ink to one of my little cups of resin and I'm using pinata colors, it's their lime green. And I'm also gonna add just a couple drops of white as well to brighten up that color. And just giving that a nice mix until the colors are completely combined. And 
And then for my darker green, I'll be using pinata colors in their forest green and just a couple drops of that and also one or two small drops of white. And you really don't need a lot of colored resin for this project, especially because we're going to use the heat gun on it later and it's really going to move and spread out. So just a little bit of color, just enough to kind of make some highlights. And then I do want slightly more white because the white is going to act as the base for the colors, if that makes sense. So I'll probably have about two to three times the amount of white as I do of the other colors. And after my colors are mixed, I'll set them to the side and start attaching some of my larger crystals. And I'm going to do this just by using a little bit of hot glue. And I personally like to arrange them in little clusters of two or three. I just think that it looks the best. And next up, I'm just going to take a very small, thin layer of this white resin and put that around my larger crystals, and that's going to help keep them in place. And it's also going to be used because right on top of that, I'm going to add a really chunky crushed glass that's going to have a nice crystally geode effect. And now I'm just adding another little layer of a finer crushed glass in a gold color. And then next I'm going to start layering my colors starting with my darker green. And I'm just using a bit of green here because I am planning on blowing it out with my heat gun and that's really gonna move and spread those colors out quite a bit. So just a little bit of color is gonna go a long way for this project. So once I'm happy with the amount of color that I have in my mold, I'm going to go ahead and start using my heat gun to heat up that resin and move those colors around. And you'll see that as the resin heats up, it gets more and more fluid and easier to blend those colors together. And then just tilting the piece down a little bit to spread out those colors a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little crutch, just a little piece of paper towel underneath the top of that um, crescent because I don't want my resin to go too much higher than what it is now. And then I'm just adding a little bit more of my dark green and covering it up for the night. That layer of resin has cured. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some of my crushed glass. This is the gold color, hypo. And I'm adding just a little bit of resin to that. I wanna keep it pretty chunky because I don't want it to spread out over the entire piece. I'm gonna be putting this in a little sandwich baggie to make a piping bag, cutting the tip of that bag off and then using that as a piping tool just to make some gold accents on the crescent.
And then just using my heat gun to pop any of the little bubbles that have formed in that resin. All right, and then after that layer of crushed glass has totally cured, we're gonna go ahead in with a Deco Color Premium Paint Pen in gold. And I'm just gonna be reinforcing some of those gold lines and also adding some highlights and detail lines as well. And if I could just make a quick confession, I was a little bit too overly zealous to work on this project. I should have let my first layer of colors cure all the way. They were still a little bit wet. And so as my crushed glass sort of cured and settled in, it settled into that layer of resin. So if I had let that first layer cure all the way, the crushed glass would be more raised and would have like a lumpier sort of feeling to it, which is kind of cool. I think it looks better, but I'm still pretty happy with how this project turned out. And I'm also going ahead and just um, coloring a couple of those crystals gold as well. And as you can see here, I decided to go ahead and make the outer edge of my crescent gold as well. And then when I'm happy with how my piece looks, I'll give it a couple minutes to dry and then next up is going to be top coating. So to top coat this piece, I mixed up about 20 milliliters of clear resin and then I went ahead and I put the piece up on two small cups just because you don't want your piece to stick to your, your work surface. As I'm spreading the resin around and also later when I heat it up and it gets more fluid, more viscous, it's going to have some drips coming down off of the sides and so I just want to make sure that it's not resting on a surface and it's not going to get stuck to anything that it's resting on. So I'm just making sure I've got a nice thin even coat over the whole piece and that's going to really protect all of that gold paint pen so it doesn't chip over time. It also gives a really nice glossy finish to the finished piece along with making sure that all of those crystals are really secured down well. And then after that top coat is cured, I'm gonna go ahead and install the hardware to make this a little wall hanger. So I'm just taking a Sharpie to mark out where I want to drill my holes. And then I'll be using a detail little rotary tool and using that to drill into my piece. Hello, yes, we hear you. And when you're drilling into resin, you definitely want to use some safety gear. So I'll be using an N95 mask and some eye protection because you really don't want to inhale any of these little particles. And when you're drilling, just make sure that you're not going in too deep. I really just want to get um, the hole started because I'm going to be using some eye screws to screw into those little holes to make this a hanger. Thank you. 
And now that I have my piece prepped for the hardware, I'm just gonna be taking a little bit of my E6000 glue, putting that on a little piece of wax paper, and then I'll be using these eye screws to screw into those holes that I just drilled, and I'll be putting just a little bit of that glue on the end of each screw just to reinforce them. And then once I have all of those screwed in nice and tight, I'm gonna be cutting two small lengths of chain. One length is gonna go at the top between those two little screws to make it a hanger, and then a smaller length is gonna go down in the middle and it's gonna be holding a little crystal. So I've got my two lengths of chain here and I'm gonna be using my pliers, my jewelry tools, and some little jump rings to attach my chain onto my moon. So I've got this prism crystal here that I'm gonna go ahead and hang in the center of the moon, but first I need to make it so I can hang it. So I'm just gonna take about five to six inches of some wire and cut that off, come on. And then I'm just gonna thread that through the hole at the top. Each side of that is gonna get crossed over and I'm gonna wrap one side around the other. I do have some other videos with um, wire wrapping in them, so I will link those down below too if you wanna see more in depth. But then I'm taking my needle nose pliers here and I'm just using that to make a loop by taking one side of that wire and looping it over the top of the needle nose pliers and then securing it down by just wrapping those little edges around few times and then I'll go ahead and cut off the tail, tighten it up with my pliers and wrap the other edge around a few more times and then cut that side off as well. So then I'm gonna set that crystal to the side and I'll be using another jump ring to attach the chain to the middle part of my crescent. And I'm attaching the chain first so I can kind of eyeball where the crystal's gonna lie and see if I need to make my chain a little bit shorter. And then when I'm happy with the length, I'll go ahead and attach my crystal. So our piece is all finished up and ready to hang. And I think it turned out really beautiful. Please let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of this project. Let me know if there is another color or color combination that you want to see in the future. And if you have seen my other video on making these little geode style moons, let me know which one you like best. Do you like the orientation with it in the center or at the bottom more? And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did make it all the way to the end, Thank you, thank you, thank you. It really helps out my channel a lot. And if you did make it all the way to the end, leave me some green emojis in the comments below so that I know that it's real. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.